1972, a French factory began importing high-quality rare uranium ore from Oklo in Africa's Gabon Republic. Many quickly began to wonder where they had acquired such a difficult thing to make. It turned out that the uranium had come from a place which should have rewritten the history books, yet it seems to have been quietly brushed into the archives of the past. They found the site of origin had functioned as a large-scale nuclear reactor. Amazingly though, this reactor was in operation some 1.8 million years ago and was functioning for over 500,000 years. These unbelievable claims were not made lightly, or indeed by anybody. They were conclusions by some of the greatest minds on Earth. For example, Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, former head of the United States Atomic Energy Commission and Nobel Prize winner for his work in the synthesis of heavy elements, explained to the press why he believed it wasn't a natural phenomenon and must have been a man-made nuclear reactor. He stated that for uranium to burn in a reaction, very precise conditions are needed. The water must be extremely pure, much purer than exists anywhere naturally. The material, U-235, is also necessary for this type of nuclear fission to occur, one of the isotopes not found naturally in uranium. Additionally, several specialists in reactor engineering have also come forward to testify that they believe the uranium in Oklo could not have been rich in U-235 enough for a reaction to take place naturally. It must have, somehow, been a man-made operation. And new research has only deepened the mystery, confirming that water regulated the nuclear reactions in a cyclic pattern similar to that of a geyser. Alex Meshik and his colleagues at Washington University of St. Louis have determined that the Oklo reactor, which comprises several separate sites, ran for 30 minutes and then shut off for two and a half hours before starting over. The time is characteristic of water infiltrating rocks and then being boiled off once reaction started, Meshik told the press. When the water all boiled away, the reaction stopped until new water percolated back down. This geyser-like activity also prevented a runaway reaction. It's amazing it didn't explode, Message said. Instead, it efficiently released energy in short pulses for an extremely long period of time. The nuclear fuel at Oklo was uranium, specifically U-235, and currently U-235 only makes up about 0.7% of the uranium found naturally on Earth. Just who could have possibly been around over 1.8 million years ago? Or more specifically, able to enrich uranium and create nuclear power? Is man's history on Earth really that old? It seems, according to numerous nuclear specialists and the compelling evidence they present, that is exactly the case. Hi guys, have you ever heard of Dendera Temple? Known as the Sixth Gnome of Upper Egypt, it is one of the best preserved ancient temple complexes on Earth, and it bears the scars of what must have been the most frightening and destructive of events. An event that is ignored by the majority of modern academia. The complex spans some 40,000 square feet within the temple is some of the most well-preserved ancient artworks of anywhere in Egypt. Along with preserving the exquisite art and decorations, the temple also preserved evidence of something we were not taught about in history class. Upon the granite steps, which still lead to the temple's roof, in direct alignment with a small window cut into the thick stone wall, is evidence of severe melting. At one time in the temple's long life, the steps within were turned into liquid magma. What catastrophic event could lead to the melting of granite steps through a small window in the wall? Were such events commonplace, or was it the result of an accident? Is this why the ancient structures were built with such huge blocks of stone? Many have speculated that the Dendora Temple is built upon an even older site. Are the steps surviving remnants of this much earlier complex? Were they part of a structure that once witnessed a solar flare, perhaps? Or maybe a localized supernova? Many who have examined the steps and the surrounding area have speculated that nuclear blasts may have been detonated within ancient Egypt, or even before. The ancient site in India, for example, 10 miles west of Jodhpur, with radiation that was so intense the area is still highly dangerous. An ancient layer of radioactive ash was discovered that covers a 3 square mile area. Scientists investigating the site where a housing development was being built 
established that there was a very high rate of illnesses in the area. The levels of radiation were so high, the Indian government eventually cordoned off the entire area. They later unearthed an ancient city, which shows strong evidence of an atomic blast dating back some 12,000 years, which destroyed most of the buildings and killed an estimated half a million people. Did nuclear war occur in our distant past? Were these ancient structures which have stood the test of time actually built as bunkers? With melted steps and irradiated ancient cities found throughout the world, the evidence is certainly compelling. As always, thanks for watching guys, until next time, take care.
The temple also preserved evidence of something we were not taught about in history class. Upon the granite steps, which still lead to the temple's roof, in direct alignment with a small window cut into the thick stone wall, is evidence of severe melting. At one time in the temple's long life, the steps within were turned into liquid magma. What catastrophic event could lead to the melting of granite steps through a small window in the wall? Were such events commonplace, or was it the result of an accident? Is this why the ancient structures were built with such huge blocks of stone? Many have speculated that the Dendora Temple is built upon an even older site. Are the steps surviving remnants of this much earlier complex? Were they part of a structure that once witnessed a solar flare, perhaps, or maybe a localized supernova? Many who have examined the steps and the surrounding area have speculated that nuclear blasts may have been detonated within ancient Egypt, or even before. Beit Sherim is an ancient cemetery located within Galilee. Very close by is a natural cave. It had apparently fallen into disuse at the end of the 4th century and filled up partially with 4 or 5 feet of clay-like silt. In 1956, a bulldozer was taken in to clear the rubble, but what it would uncover can be seen as an enormous upart, an out-of-place artifact. It turned out to be a large ancient rectangular slab made from an unknown material. Because of its size, measuring 6.5 by 11 feet long, 18 inches thick and weighing in at over 9 tons, it was not surprisingly left where it lay. With a perfectly level surface, its origins were a mystery, yet alas, at the time, not a pressing one. However, in 1963, members of a joint expedition of the Corning Museum of Glass and the University of Missouri would bring to light a curious reality. While surveying the region for possible remains of ancient glass factories, someone suggested that the Bet Sharim slab might have been made of glass. A suggestion initially perceived as a joke. Amazingly, chemical analysis was indeed carried out, confirming that this enormous and extremely ancient slab was indeed made of glass. It is therefore believed that the Bet Sharim slab is a huge piece of first stage glass meant to have been broken up and fashioned into objects somewhere else that for some reason was abandoned right where it was made. In conclusion, several factors surrounding the existence of the slab are currently unexplainable. According to mainstream views surrounding the evolution of glassmaking, the production of such an enormous base material would have been simply impossible, requiring over 12 tons of raw materials, over 20 tons of furnace fuel, the maintaining of a temperature of over 1100 degrees centigrade for no less than five continuous days, finally producing a nine-ton slab of perfectly level, perfectly rectangular glass, clearly demonstrates the requirement of a highly advanced refinery with highly advanced technologies harnessed by a past civilization. Additionally, at the time of its discovery, only two other pieces of glass have ever been created that are larger. Both rest within the enormous telescopic mirrors of machines developed within the past century. It seems clear to us that the Beth Sharim slab is one of those rare gems that clearly demonstrates the past existence of a highly advanced highly capable ancient civilization that once lived and was unfortunately lost here on Earth. There are places on our planet that still contain some astonishing ruins originating from a very distant antiquity. 
quietly studied by academics the world over, and just as quietly dismissed as modern works, are from not-so-distant, more primitive ancestors. Or, if fated enough, attributed to natural activities by geologists, funded by the same infrastructure as that of the academic world, paid to explain the origins of the ruins of Earth to a particular already permitted timeline. Not only are these funded individuals directed to only attribute such sites to a certain timeline, but if they go against the grain by actually attributing them or sharing data contradicting such timelines, it is often thrown out and their funding ended, slowly drying up with their future opportunities in the field, as well as their prospects and ultimately their reputation. Regardless of this, facts do not lie. And the more one explores the anomalies we present here on our channel, the more one may find themselves coming to similar conclusions as we have regarding the illogical nature and often impossibility of these advanced ancient ruins having been created using now lost knowledge or technologies, once being the work of the academically claimed culprit. Siberia is indeed one of these places, and due to the remote nature of some of the ruins found here, are easily dismissed, hidden from a modern world, battling to regain the truth regarding our past. Altai is an area that contains many ancient megaliths, so old they are undeniably the legacy of a civilization now long lost to history. Yet this tremendous age is a double-edged sword. Not only could they eventually reveal, like done during current studies of the antiquities already covered on the channel, reveal that ruins found across the globe just don't date from a single civilization, but are, in fact, the work of separate civilizations who have presumably been and gone at different times, making the flourishment of man and, indeed, our eventual decline a cyclical occurrence. But due to tremendous age, can also be dismissed as nothing but mere geological features. This regardless of the still remaining highly eroded evidence that can be found at such sites, which is indeed indicative of artificial origins. Furthermore, there also exists a number of supposed hillsides that just like the pyramids of Giza, have resisted the tests of time more successfully than their polygonal counterparts meaning their undeniable shape and alignments have survived long enough for them to stick out like sore thumbs amongst a landscape which is unbalanced and predictably unaligned. A background made by nature, yet their angle of descent, their ridged edges, and ultimately their artificial nature still allows one to recognize them and identify them as not only places of interest, but ancient pyramids hidden from man for countless millennia, protected by mountain ranges and hostile, inhospitable climates, which our modern technology is slowly allowing us to rediscover, regardless of a modern academia who would rather we didn't. Additionally, not only can these artificial and highly intriguing features be found here, but also possible evidence to indicate how their creators came to an untimely demise possibly at the hands of immense heat and a possible natural disaster. Found within the nature reserve of Ergaki, among the western Sayan mountain range, is a feature that has rarely been seen, let alone photographed, an entire side of one of the mountains was, at some time within the distant past, turned to magma during an event yet to be understood. Turned to liquid magma, this stone flowed like liquid but only for a short period before re-solidifying. A relic from a disastrous event undoubtedly packed tremendous force. Yet, whether this is evidence of the event which decimated the ancient civilization responsible for Siberia's ruins is yet to be fully known. It is a place that is undoubtedly highly compelling. Tambo Machai is an ancient site located within Peru that, like so many others within this remarkable landscape, clearly demonstrates a level of sophistication within its stonework 
unquestionably far out of the reaches of those who are academically claimed to have been the builders of these remarkable sites. It is a site that not only possesses the same mind-boggling methods of polygonal masonry as that of Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman, among many others, but also exhibits an excellent example of the levels of refinement that also went into the building of the irrigation systems throughout the area. Systems that, although unimaginably old, still function perfectly to this day. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding this area, even eclipsing these astonishing feats of ancient engineering, is an area in particular which exhibits some of the most perplexing peculiar feature to be found anywhere in ancient Peru. This area of stone is not merely vitrified, but was, at some point within the distant past, turned to lava. With the limited investigations available, predictably none of which undertaken by funded academics, it has been revealed that this mysterious event did not occur as one would have presumed from a heating from above, but from beneath, or perhaps from within the center of the stonework, successfully melting the stone wall in its entirety into a pool of liquid magma. And although largely overlooked by tourists, and indeed academics alike, the evidence of the stone having once turned to liquid is undeniable. The question then, what turned this stone to liquid? Was it some form of weapon? Or perhaps, is this evidence to suggest how polygonal walls were once built? Perhaps these as yet unexplained polygonal walls were constructed with such precision due to a past ability of its builders, able to melt and shape these stones prior to placement. Or perhaps, could this melted stone be evidence of a war? One that occurred between the inhabitants of these ancient ruins and an unknown entity, ultimately resulting in their demise. Perhaps being the reason why these highly advanced, highly capable ancient people from these civilizations not only mysteriously disappeared, but left many a quarry amid ancient stonework seemingly abandoned, left where we find them today. In another area of the world, far away from Peru, there also exists compelling evidence of such a war, having actually once taken place with a possible entity from above. Eerily, this site is claimed as the remnants of a battle with God, specifically surrounding the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sulfur balls embedded among the landscape at this specific site is undoubtedly compelling evidence to support these accounts of war, a holy war, undertaken at this specific location that, regardless of holy scripture, was fought with a foe of considerable ability. Exclusively found at these sites are white, pure sulfur balls embedded in the mortar that now, due to their tremendous age, are slowly turning to powder. The sulfur found at these sites has also, intriguingly, been tested from 93% to as high as 98% pure sulfur, with trace metals such as magnesium found within, that would have produced astounding heat, easily capable of melting stainless steel and indeed the stones within Peru. Furthermore, the brimstone found is significantly different to sulfur found elsewhere, almost as if this brimstone was specifically designed. For example, Sulfur from within natural geothermal regions is yellow in crystal form. We find all these evidential factors highly compelling.
Scotland is a country which holds many mysterious tales of ancient beings who were said to once dwell within the astonishingly beautiful highlands. From fairies to ancient sea monsters, many a legend is said to be found here, including the odd piece of compelling evidence to back up such claims. However, our next Scottish mystery of focus is abundant with evidence. In fact, the evidence left surrounding this mysterious ancient technology is actually the mystery itself. Over 200 years ago, archaeologists exploring the ancient ruins found to dot the rural countryside began to notice a remarkable characteristic of about 60 mysterious structures found dotting the Scottish Highlands. Made using rocks with no mortar, instead, the rocks on the outer layer of these structures upon completion went through an as-yet unknown process of vitrification. The builders of these extreme ancient forts were somehow able to heat the stones to such a degree that the outer layer actually turned to glass, fixing the stones in place and making them virtually impenetrable to erosion, meaning that the true age of these miraculous structures may be far, far older than we are led to believe. Although, for the first 250 years of study, these forts were presumed to have been exclusive to Scotland, thanks to the results of the research, they have actually begun to turn up in other regions of the world, most specifically Western Europe. With such overwhelming evidence in the face of adversity, academia, it would seem, have reluctantly been resigned to agreement with the extremely controversial facts displayed within these ancient stone forts. Quote, no lime or cement has been found in any of these structures, all of them presenting the peculiarity of being more or less consolidated by the fusion of the rocks of which they are built. This fusion, which has been caused by the application of intense heat, is not equally complete in the various forts, or even in the walls of the same fort. In some cases, the stones are only partially melted and calcined. In others, their adjoining edges are fused so that they are firmly cemented together. In many instances, pieces of rock are enveloped in a glassy enamel-like coating, which binds them into a uniform whole, and at times, though rarely, the entire length of the wall presents one solid mass of vitreous substance. It is not clear why or how the walls were subjected to vitrification." End quote. Although the explanation put forward after examining these facts could be seen as a desperate attempt to continue to deny the existence of a highly aware, highly capable, intercontinental ancient civilization, which once flourished here on our planet. Who built these forts? What clearly advanced yet ancient heat technology did they use to turn the outer casing stones to glass? With the pace of such discoveries being revealed to the world increasing, it is only a matter of time before we find out.